Hello, I am Dr. Mini Matthew. I am going to talk to you on women's nutrition and health. This module is designed for master's students of women's development and empowerment. This module will help the student to understand the role of nutrition and health for women and how good health is an important dimension for women's empowerment. Frequent illness can have a strong negative impact on the role women can play in economic and social development. Therefore, we are going to learn some basic nutrition and health facts and simple approaches to remain healthy. Today when girls want to be equal to boys, girls need to grow up to their genetic potential and for this, good nutrition and health play an important role. Why is it important for girls and women to be healthy? It's important to grow up to your genetic potential so that you can achieve the learning levels to the best of your capacity. When you remain healthy, you develop a good immune system which helps you to fight against illness. You can be physically active and work at an optimal level. Good health from infancy through childhood can prevent illness such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, etc. which will contribute to healthy living throughout adulthood and old age. What is nutritional status then? The condition of the body influenced by the nutrients consumed through dietary intake and the ability of the body to utilize the nutrients for the functioning of the body. So it's not to be confused with just what we are eating. It needn't have the same outcome. Therefore, it's important to understand that it's got a metabolic role and the outcome of it is very important. What is health status? Health status is beyond the presence of absence of disease and includes aspects of body functioning which includes physical and mental well-being of an individual. Dietary and health habits have strong influence on the nutrition and health status of people. What is now malnutrition? We learned what, was, what is nutritional status. Now what is malnutrition? It can be defined as a situation when the body has an imbalance of nutrients such as calories, excess, that is you eat too much of starchy food, proteins, too much of meat and eggs and milk, vitamins and minerals, including trace elements. So there should be a balance between the nutrients. If this balance is upset, it's called malnutrition. This condition makes people vulnerable to diseases. Girls and women do not enjoy the same nutritional health status as boys and men do. This is a fact that you have to reconcile with. This has implications at the household level and if it is a widespread phenomenon in the country, it can have a negative impact on the country's gross domestic product. This session will be covered through four parts. The first part, I will talk about the nutrition and health status of women in India. The second part is about the micronutrient malnutrition among women in India, especially I will talk about anemia and iodine deficiency disorders. And the third part would be on the maternal and reproductive health and the last part would be on the common health problems among women in India. Now let's begin to discuss the nutrition and health status of women in India. Women are more likely to be malnourished as I mentioned earlier since they have a menstrual cycle and a reproductive system with special demands on nutrition. The health and nutritional status of women have a stronger link to their social status including lack of awareness of the right type of quantity of food to be consumed. Sustained inadequate food leads to malnutrition which can be mild or severe. Poor quality diets with inadequate fruits and vegetables results in silent hunger which is called micronutrient malnutrition and uh, the poor quality diets can also lead to morbidity means illness. Social discrimination of adolescent girls can have a serious implication since they are growing at a very fast rate comparable to their first year of life. This is the second time in life that one grows at such a fast rate, the adolescent period and is a very important period and you have to place a lot of emphasis on adolescent period. Now, as I mentioned, there are many factors that influence the neutral status of women. I would like you to understand the vicious cycle of malnutrition. Is poor nutrition and health responsible for the poor socioeconomic status? 
or is it the poor socioeconomic status that results in poor nutrition and health status? Let us see how this vicious cycle perpetuates the poor nutrition and health status of girls and women. So let's start with this, the low status of girls and women. It is true in India, it, there is a low status for girls and women and that leads to poor quality of food that they eat. They always eat last and they get the worst. And the, therefore, they have a low body mass index. They suffer from micronutrient deficiency and they have reduced immunity. Reduced immunity means that they don't have the strength to fight illness. Then what happens? They get frequent illness. So, and then when they become ill, what happens? The girls and women are not taken to the doctors. So, there's a poor health care provided to them. And then again leads to poor nutrition and health status and a unhealthy woman gives birth to a low birth weight baby and the child has low capacity to learn and earn and again this leads to the low status of girls and women. So this goes on, this is what is being perpetuated for women in India. So somewhere we have to break the cycle, that's something that you will have to think and ponder about, we will come to it. And it has to be broken, otherwise we can't, we are not going to make any change in India. In order to know whether one is undernourished or not, we have certain comprehensive assessment methods. One is the anthropometric measurements most commonly used, such as measurements of height, weight. Next, I'm going to talk about the body composition, because if you take the weight of a person, you cannot make out whether the person has too much of body fat or not. So the body composition, is measured by using the body mass index and it's calculated as weight divided by the height squared. This is a global index of nutritional status. However, this method has serious limitations in the sense that it cannot distinguish between fat and lean mass so accurately. You have another method now, the bioelectric impedance analysis BIA is also being used increasingly and the, uh, this is usually used in uh, hospital situations and there are some models for the home also. The conventional single frequency method does not have much precision. So you need a more sophisticated machine to get a better reading. Then you have the clinical assessments by looking at the person for certain symptoms. Then you have biochemical measurements for protein, micronutrients, metabolic parameters. Then of course, the measurements of dietary intake. Each of them have their limitations. Sometimes they're used alone or in combination and depend on why you're, and what the purpose of doing the assessment. Let's now discuss about the body mass index. Now, using this as an indicator to measure nutritional status of adults, there are more women in India who have a BMI less than the normal BMI. So you can see this from the graph. You see the large number of women who are undernourished when compared to men. Women who are underweight will be malnourished, will have weak bones, weak immune system, anemia, dry skin, loss of hair, digestive disorders, irregular menstrual cycle and even infertility. So you understand how important it is to remain healthy. Now suboptimal BMI levels can reduce capacity to concentrate, can cause memory impairment which means learning problems. They will have increased risk of infection and heart problems and respiratory disease. Low BMI before pregnancy can have serious implications on the birth weight of babies and are likely to deliver preterm and low birth weight babies. Low BMI is also associated with pregnancy and labor complications such as diabetes, postpartum, hemorrhage. The gender dimension is very important as we saw earlier there are more women with the low BMI than men. So let's look at it. Adolescents and young women in invariably enter pregnancy in an undernourished condition and therefore are at a risk to poor birth outcome. This can also lead to maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality. A study was conducted by the National Institute of Nutrition covering nine states of India in 2010 and that has shown the intake of all nutrients were lower than the recommended levels suggested by the Indian Council of Medical Research. The deficiency of energy and protein intake was greater among pregnant and lactating women. This comes to the point that the requirement is much higher in pregnancy and in lactation 
and therefore the uh, deficit is much larger. In order to maintain a normal BMI range, it is important to consume a healthy balanced diet, increase your calorie intake, eat nutrients, dense foods instead of empty calories such as for example, if you take some soft drinks, they do not offer you any nutrients except some calories. So, whenever you consume calories, please ensure that you get the micronutrients along with it. Do not allow an imbalance of the food you eat, but eating uh, eating junk foods, regular exercise is very important. Now let us discuss about the micronutrient malnutrition among women in India. The most common micronutrient malnutrition includes vitamin A deficiency, iron deficiency anemia, iodine deficiency disorders and zinc deficiency. There are others too, but I am talking of the major micronutrients. The 2010 NIN study showed that diets in rural areas were deficient in micronutrients such as iron, vitamin A and free folic acid. So, let us look at anemia because it is deficient in the diets, it is a big problem in India. And what is anemia? Anemia is a condition when there is a deficiency of hemoglobin in the blood which results in pallor and tiredness. This condition occurs mostly due to the deficiency of iron in the body. Since hemoglobin carries oxygen, when there is a deficiency of hemoglobin, the body cells will not get enough oxygen and therefore you become fatigued and you have your poor work output. Anemia is a very common condition in the world and is highly prevalent in India, especially among children, women and men. But it is higher among children and women when compared to men. You will observe from the chart. The situation in India shows that a large proportion of children are anemic and women when compared to men are more anemic and pregnant women are more anemic than non-pregnant women. The major cause of anemia includes iron deficiency, hookworm infestation, vitamin A deficiency, malaria, chronic diseases such as tuberculosis and HIV. The consequences of anemia include fatigue as we discussed earlier and cognitive loss resulting in reduced work output and earning capacity. This leads to productivity loss and a loss to GNP. Anemia can cause irregular heartbeat because it pumps more blood to make up for the reduced oxygen that is being transported to the blood. Maternal anemia leads to increased blood loss during delivery which can lead to maternal mortality. Anemic women are likely to deliver premature and low birth weight babies. Anemia affects the immune system which can make a person ill more frequently. Anemia through adolescence can delay the age of menarche. Anemia can cause neurological problems such as headache, irritability and muscle weakness. What do you do then if you are anemic? You have to reduce the intake of refined foods such as sugar, refined flour. Of course, an iron rich diet will be helpful, but never forget to have a balanced diet since proteins, vitamins and minerals are important to have proper iron absorption. Enabling nutrients include copper, folic acid, vitamin B12 and ascorbic acid which is vitamin C. Therefore, fresh fruits and vegetables should be an important part of your diet. Let us now discuss about the vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A is important for maintaining normal growth and has an important role for maintaining good vision and epithelial tissues. A survey conducted by the National Institute of Nutrition covering 9 states revealed that 0.6% of tribal women and 0.3% of rural women had vitoid spots, a clinical sign of vitamin A deficiency. Now, vitoid spots are spots that you get. Uh, in your eye and uh, this is something clinically you can uh, identify. Vitamin A deficiency is highly prevalent in the third trimester among Indian pregnant women belonging to low socioeconomic groups. The Indian vitamin A deficiency is a public health problem. A good diet would be very helpful. This could include carrots that is beta carotene which is getting converted into vitamin A later, the dark green vegetables, sweet potatoes, capsicum, green chilies, fish, melon, mango, etc. 
Now, vitamin A supplementation in the postpartum period will help in improving the retinol content in the breast milk and improving the blood retinol of the infants. And the government of India has a program to provide vitamin A to the vulnerable groups. IDD includes a range of issues such as cretinism, mental retardation, learning disabilities, goiter, hypothyroidism, abortion and stillbirth. A large number of Indian children have iron deficiency. Pregnant women and newborn infants are highly prone to IDD. IDD has a public health significance in India and the entire country is prone to IDD. The reason is environmental degradation. The solution to this problem is consumption of iodized salt. India has adopted the universal salt iodization. So that will help people to be safe. Let us now go to a aspect of maternal and reproductive health of women. The health of a woman is very important for successful full term pregnancy and a healthy birth outcome. Successful motherhood depends on the social, physical and emotional well-being. Although maternal and infant deaths have come down in India, we continue to have a high maternal mortality. The maternal mortality rate fell from 212 deaths per 100,000 live births in 2007-2009 278 in 2010 2012 it is still an unacceptably high level what are the reasons why do we have this problem age at preg pregnancy now adolescent pregnancies is very dangerous girls below the age of 19 can be problematic since adolescents themselves have not attained their full growth if they become pregnant they will be competing with the fetus for the nutrition the stress can negatively influence the mother and the birth outcome, that is the baby. The risk of maternal death is uh, double than that of an adult woman. Adolescent marriage and pregnancy is a result of gender inequality. But then we have to look at the other side. Pregnancy after 35 also poses risks such as miscarriage, premature delivery, stillbirth, excessive bleeding and gestational diabetes. Health and nutritional status of the woman before and during pregnancy is very important. Normally during the pre-pregnancy situation, women are quite healthy provided they eat a nutritious diet and are not anemic. So health care during pregnancy is very important. Prenatal care includes regular checkup, good diet, access to iron and folic acid, supplementation, immunization, etc. When women do not consume adequate food, they do not gain enough weight and they use their own body stores for the fetal growth and place themselves at risk. At the same time, obesity can also have negative effect, sometimes leading to gestational diabetes. So it doesn't mean that if you are pregnant, you have to eat more and you eat, overeat and you have an obesity problem that also can cause serious problems. Due to gender discrimination, a woman sometimes does not receive health services which is to be noted. Sometimes health services are far away and therefore prenatal care is ignored. Lack of information is at another important reason why women do not receive the services. Sometimes women know, the men do not know, so it's important to communicate these problems with men and women so that they are, get, receive the health services on time. Now let's move on to a different dimension that is the reproductive tract infection. This is also a very serious problem and cause threat to fertility. While both men and women are at risk, it poses greater risk to women. RTI can result in fetal wastage, that is abortion, low birth weight of babies and infections at birth. It's a great problem more among the adolescent mothers than the older mothers. Oral health has a strong bearing on the birth weight of babies, good oral health has advantages to both mother and child. Poor oral health is related to several diseases and poor birth outcome and this is highly ignored in India, the oral hygiene. So what can we do? Regular, regular medical checkup is very important, consuming a balanced diet and additional food for the growing fetus, consuming nutritional supplements such as iron and folic acid, personal and oral hygiene and regular exercise and rest. The pregnant woman also need some rest. Now let us look at the health problems among women. While illness can affect both men and women, there are some illness which are more prevalent among women and we will be discussing them here. Women have a tendency not to reveal their illness. They lack awareness and when they do perceive and reveal, women do not receive the adequate health care 
due to gender discrimination. One is the urinary tract infection. This is very common. Women are more prone to UTI perhaps due to anatomical differences with men. The urinary tract infection is caused by the bacteria moving from the bowels or the anus to the urinary tract including the kidneys, ureters, bladder and the urethra. One can develop urinary tract infection due to incomplete emptying of the bladder through intercourse or because of reduced immunity. Symptoms of the urinary tract infection include a burning sensation while passing urine, a tendency to frequently urinate, cloudy and bad smelling urine, low abdominal pain and fever. When you have these symptoms, you need to consult a doctor. You can prevent urinary tract infection by emptying the bladder regularly, drinking plenty of water and cleaning from front to back and not the other way around so that you do not carry the infections. The next serious uh, problem that I am going to discuss with you is the breast cancer. Now, this definitely also has a gender role. Women have a greater risk for breast cancer. In cancer, one has malignancy which means abnormal cells. Who is prone to this? Older women are more prone to develop breast cancer. Menstruation before 12 years and menopause after 55 increase the risk. Overweight or obesity, lack of physical exercise are also contributory factors. There are genetic mutations and history of cancer in the family which predisposes you more to breast cancer. Exposure to radiations, hormone therapy and environment have a great role to play. How do you recognize or suspect that you may have breast cancer? In the early stages, cancer being painless goes unnoticed. Therefore, regular screening is very important. Mammographic screening is of course controversial, very helpful. However, screening once in two years for women older than 55 has been recommended. Self-examination, this can be very beneficial. One can check for the following. A person with breast cancer can develop a lump in the breast, pain in the breast, discharge from the nipple, change in the shape of the breast, patch on the breast. Any such changes when you observe kindly go to the doctor. Early detection will have enormous advantages since it helps you to live longer. Yet another problem is cervical cancer is really taking off over many forms of cancer. Cervical cancer is very common in India. This is caused by a virus or sometimes a bacterial infection and is transmitted through sexual contact. Bad hygiene is a contributory factor. You can be at risk if you have multiple partners, do not use contraceptive protection and have too many pregnancies. Since it is caused by a viral infection, it is preventable unlike the other cancers. It can be detected through a pap smear test which is done in most of the hospitals here. Osteoporosis is one of the common problems in India. As the word suggests, it means porous bones, this bone lose their density, they get so reduced. This is a condition which occurs among more among older women because of reduced estrogen production. Early menopause can be responsible for onset of osteoporosis. It can also cause fractures. Therefore, it is important to avoid falls. But the older you get, the careful, more careful you have to be because if you, if you have osteoporosis, there is a tendency to fall and if you fall, it is difficult to take care of it. Persons with osteoporosis have reduced vitamin D levels and increased parathyroid hormone production. Lack of exposure to sunlight can be a predisposing factor. The causes of osteoporosis are malnutrition, low intake of dietary calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, zinc, iron, fluoride, vitamin A, K, E and C. High blood acidity can also contribute to the development of osteoporosis. An imbalance of omega-6 and omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids can be a contributory factor. I hope you understand when I say the balance between omega-6 and omega-3. You obtain omega-6 uh, from vegetable oils, uh, but uh, when you get omega-3 from fish oil and from olive, olive oil. So, too much of oil consumption is definitely harmful because it is difficult to uh, achieve the balance with omega-3. So, always uh, reduced fat content will be helpful. Since I am talking to non-nutritionists, I would like to explain about this ratio. For a lay person's comprehension, it is the imbalance between the corn oil, sunflower and peanut oil that is too much of these in proportion to olive and the fish oil. 
So, that is how we understand the balance. Now, soft drinks, I think most students love to take the soft drinks, but this can be uh, place you at risk to osteoporosis since they contain phosphoric acid. So, try to avoid soft drinks. We are going to move on to sexually transmitted diseases among women. As the name implies, these diseases are contracted from one person to another through sexual contact. To mention some of the sexually transmitted diseases, chlamydia, HPV, genital herpes, gonorrhea, syphilis, hepatitis B and C and also HIV. We will discuss HIV separately. The others can be treated with the help of antibiotics but may develop resistance due to frequent infections. So, you have to be very careful. See, when you develop these infections frequently, no antibiotics can help because you develop drug resistance. These infections can lead to fertility and pregnancy problems, premature births and infants can also develop eye infection and damage when they are delivered by the women with the sexually transmitted illness. So, it is very dangerous and has very bad implications. Let us understand the mechanism, how the virus attacks the body. First, it enters the healthy body. Then it targets the T cell CD4 responsible for the immune system, direct attack. It binds with the surface of the T cells. Then it releases an enzyme into the nucleus of the T cells and fuses its RNA into the DNA of the T cells. That means it is imposing itself on it. This way, the virus replicates itself and destroys the T cells. Thus, the body loses its immunity. So, when the CD4 count goes below 200 uh, per millimeter cubed, the person is moving to AIDS. Now, treatment is offered maybe only when people have count below 200, but I think it is much better to start treatment earlier than 300 or so because it, you will uh, recoup better, you will uh, cope with the drug much better, the ART. Uh, than going so low because we have seen through some studies that people who are at the initial stages they respond much better to the drug. But because due to financial implications the government has lowered the level uh, of uh, CD4 level count to go down to 200 cells but technically about 300, 350 one should start the treatment. At least you can start on good food for the HIV patients. Some patients start experiencing symptoms such as flu after being infected with HIV. Others do not experience any symptom for years, even a decade. The symptoms of HIV include frequent infections like diarrhea, thrush, tiredness, headache, fever, dry cough, weight loss, etc. HIV patients very commonly develop tuberculosis. The best way to know if one is infected with HIV is to go for a test, which is done confidentially. So, if you, if anyone experiences kind of repeated problems, one should definitely go for a test. While there is no cure, treatments are available to improve the immune system and to help you live longer. The drugs definitely have side effects and after some period, the patient may develop drug resistance. It is therefore immensely important to adopt safety measures so that one is not exposed to the infection. Good food which will improve the immune system is also very important. We discussed the various health problems among women which commonly occur that is the urinary tract infection, the breast cancer, cervical cancer, osteoporosis, sexually transmitted diseases among women, the human immunodeficiency virus, the HIV. To sum up again I would like to emphasize the need for good food, the right kind of food, exercise, health care, high personal hygiene etcetera. So, with these words I would like to conclude. Thank you.